Lowell, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. My pleasure, Luke. Thank you. Um, so tell me a little bit about your parents. What did they do for a living? Okay. Um, my dad was a lawyer. We lived in Brooklyn, New York, and my dad um, had an office in Lower Manhattan, and my mom was a, uh, an elementary school teacher. And, and what did... Yeah, go ahead. No, that's okay. And what did they want from you? <laughs> I was supposed to be the lawyer. My older brother was in the doctor slot. My younger sister was the teacher slot. And I was in the, the lawyer slot. And they uh, fully expected that I would become an attorney. <laughs> and when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, gosh. Uh, I wanted to be one of the Brooklyn Dodgers. That's pretty clear to me. Um, and play at Ebbets Field in Brooklyn. Um, <laughs> but the, the, uh, then two things happened. They moved to Los Angeles, and I was not really a very good baseball player. So um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And in fact, this is going to sound really stupid. Sometimes I still don't even know what I want to do, and I just turned 63 years old. Um, <laughs> what happened was I went to college. I went to uh, Lafayette College in Easton, Pennsylvania, and I was an English major, which I loved. And eventually I thought that I would be a professor of English. But a as I got into that, I, I realized that a life of research and an academic life, I was not temperamentally suited for it. And so then I had a, a long time where I, I didn't know what I wanted to, uh, to do. I knew I didn't want to be an attorney. And in fact, my dad, he was so sweet. Every few years, I mean, I was in my 30s, and he would come to me and he would say, because I didn't even have a job. I never had a full-time job till I was 34. So he would come to me and say, you know, I'll, I'll send you to law school and I'll pay for it. And I would say, Dad, you know, I'm a freelance writer. I think I can make it. And I could see it just, not that he was disappointed. He was worried for my well-being. And so, um, Dad, thanks for having uh, patience, and it worked out. Was sports always the the one thing that you loved most in life? For a while. Um, you know, I was a kid growing up in New York, and uh, there was the Yankees, the Dodgers, the Giants. There was the football Giants. Um, you know, there, there was the New York Knickerbockers and, the, um, you know, the, the the Rangers, the hockey team. It was an incredible place to be, and it appealed to me as a child and as an adolescent. But by the time I got out of college, I was young, I got out of college at 20. By the time I got out of college, I really had burnt off all of that love of sports that you, that you um, I don't know, maybe, i just say all that love of sports. And I have really not been a sports fan probably since my early 20s. And I would certainly say that sports, rooting, going to games, watching games on TV, would not nearly be uh, uh, something that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about writing about sports, but I'd be passionate writing about anything. Well, I have a passion for writing, but, uh, w for example, um, there's a football game on tonight. I'm talking to you. I'm not watching it. I rarely... Oh, yeah. I rarely turn on sports when I'm at home. Um, I, I try to keep it out of the house because it's what I do all the time for work. Yeah, I mean, same for me. When I was a teenager, I wanted to be a, a sports writer uh, when I grew up, and then I started to do it for a local uh, radio station. And for me, I st stopped being a fan the year that the Kansas City Royals played the St. Louis Cardinals in the World Series. For some reason... All these things came together, and, and sports lost its excitement. I think it was like 1985. I covered that World Series. That was oh, really? Dick, Hau Dick Hauser was the manager for Kansas City, and Whitey Herzog was the manager for St. Louis, and, and the Royals won that. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do remember that. I covered it. But it was like it was so hard to get fired up about St. Louis versus Kansas City. <laughs> yes, I understand. Uh, and again, for me, it would not be a question of, who who was in it? It would just be are these good writing opportunities for me? Yes. So in in high school, where were you in the social pecking order? Okay. 
I went to a high school in Brooklyn called Midwood, M-I-D-W-O-O-D. In fact, that's where Woody Allen went about 10 years before I did. Um, the way it worked, we were um, war babies, and they had to get you through. Because Brooklyn is really large. There, there are almost 3 million people in that borough. So uh, there were so many of us that if you had a certain IQ, you could skip the eighth grade. So we had junior high schools then, seven, eight, and nine. I went from seven to nine. I was, to begin with, um, uh, like immature in my development and in my emotions. But now when I got skipped a year, I, I was like a child with grown-ups. So yeah. t I don't think I even figured in the pecking order. There was probably a social pecking order at Midwood High School, and I was absent from it, an observer of it. I, the best possible spin I could put on it um, for being the nerd that I was, the best possible spin is I was developing the, the uh, tendencies of a writer to stand on the outside and look and look, but that would be the most um, complimentary way I could look at it because I was pretty much just a nerd and I was in all the college oriented classes. We had 4,000 in our school, so there were 1,000 in my year. Um, I was in all the college prep classes, and I actually did run track, which, which was the, probably the one thing w that made, gave me a sense of belonging and, and fun, and having fun. Did you have any teachers who said, Lo, you're going to be a writer when you grow up? No, absolutely not. Uh, all through my life, I never had that. Uh, it, it was interesting. I remember I was in, <laughs> I remember it really, I was in the class to be for the newspaper, it was the pre-newspaper class. The reason I was in it is my mom told me I should be in it because my older brother, who became the doctor, Robert, he was in it. And I remember her name was Miss Mulhern, the teacher. And then came the day she said, who in the class made it to the newspaper and who didn't? And I didn't make it. And I was humiliated in front of everybody. But then she said, Lowell doesn't belong on a newspaper. Maybe he should be in a creative writing class. I didn't know what she was talking about. She never, ever said anything else to me beyond that, and that was it. So, no, I never had any of that, and I, had a, I went to graduate school at Stanford in the English department, and uh, one of my teachers, who is a guy I like, he's still around, and he wrote on one of my papers on a Dickens, it was a Dickens paper, that my style was too simple and my, my sentences were too short and simple and abrupt. And the, the ending to that story is I became a sports columnist at the San Francisco Chronicle and I was there for 15 years. One day he wrote me a letter and he said, God, I love your prose style. <laughs> did he realize that you used to be a student? Of course he did. He yeah, just didn't yeah, yeah. remember what he wrote on my paper. Right, right. Did you have any uh, adults when you were a kid who were writers, full-time yes, writers? I did indeed. My Uncle Bob, um, he was married to my mom's sister. So he was my uncle. He was, he was a writer, and what he did was he wrote super... He, he was among a group of people who wrote Superman comics. He didn't invent Superman, but he, then they had a stable of people who would write Superman. He lived on Long Island, and um, I would look at his typewriter, and there'd be, you know, Jimmy and Lois, and, and you could see their names in their little speeches. And it was amazing to me that anyone could actually make a living writing. And he used to, he had real books in the house. I, I don't think in our apartment in Brooklyn there was a lot of that. And so uh, I, he interested me, but he was by no means an influence on me. I, I think all of it came from me um, in that I, starting in college, I discovered that I like to read fiction. And I, I, I do it, I always have several books going, even now. And I, I just fell in love with uh, that voice in my head that, that I could hear when I was reading. And at, eventually, at one point in my life, I said, I don't want to be a lawyer. I don't want to be um, an English teacher. I want to write. And I, I was so uh, determined. I used to think I would commit murder to, move where I, to go where I want to go. Luke, I never committed murder. Well, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm just saying that uh, yes. when it finally um, dawned on me that this was what I wanted to do, I would admit no, imp no impediments. 
Was there, can you picture the scene, the day that you realized this is what you wanted to do? 